guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in Kitchen, I want to share with you my recipe for what I'm calling my turkey mini meatball pot pie. I find that this is a really great alternative to like the big turkey for a holiday for your holiday. If you're having a smaller gathering, or if you just don't want to do the big turkey, this is a great alternative to that. And but it still has all those familiar flavors that you would get out of a traditional turkey in just like a Thanksgiving dinner, just in a pot pie form. Now let me take you over the ingredients so we can get started. I'm gonna need some ground turkey, I've got some chopped up celery, carrots and onions, I've got an egg, some breadcrumbs, some chopped garlic, poultry seasoning, unsalted butter, some all-purpose flour, salt and pepper, chicken stock, I've got a little bit of olive oil in my pan and you're gonna need a few more ingredients later on and I'll bring those out when it is time to use them. So, we're gonna get down and dirty, rolling my sleeves up because we're making some meatballs. I'm going to make little tiny turkey meatballs and I'm going to brown them. They're going to run through the filling and it's going to be so delicious. And to my ground turkey, I mean it really could not be easier than just pretty much dumping everything in. I'm adding some poultry seasoning which has got great uh, flavor from like sage and thyme, and rosemary, all those beautiful things, all the beautiful flavors that go with poultry. So I'm adding that. I'm also adding breadcrumbs. I'm not going to need to add all of these, but I'll keep some back. I'm going to add an egg as the binder, a good grating of salt, of pepper, and a good pinch of salt. A good grating of salt and a good pinch of pepper. Either way, tomato, tomato, you say potato. I say potato. That doesn't go, does it? That's not it. But it's okay. I'm just going to mix everything together with my hands until my mixture is well mixed and then we'll get it going on forming them. This looks good. Now you are going to make little tiny meatballs. If you want to make them all the same size, get yourself a handy dandy little ice cream scoop the size of about a teaspoon so that they're really nice and small and that they're all about the same size. So just like that. And then I just give them like a gentle roll, nothing too fancy. And then just keep on forming them. That's going to need a little bit more. I've got all my meatballs ready and you're going to get a lot out of this. Now, this is going to make enough for like if you make a nice big one pot pot pie, it'll feed between six to eight people or you're going to make smaller ones and feed six to eight people. It's completely up to you. I think today I'm going to go with smaller ones because I'm feeling rather fancy, but we both know on a normal day when I wasn't feeling so fancy, I make one big one because it's just a lot easier. <laughs> and you can Bring it, you know, put it in the middle of the table, it just looks warm and inviting and plenty and I love that. I've got a nice big pot here, now this is a, actually a large skillet with high sides, they're about three and a half inches and I've got some olive oil getting really nice and hot and the reason why I'm using this instead of my big Dutch oven is because when I put my filling, um, when I want to scoop my filling out it's just a lot easier. I'm going to add my meatballs and I want these to cook until they develop good color all around. I'm going to do this in a couple of batches and show you what they look like when they're done. I browned my meatballs really nicely. Now they're not cooked all the way through yet. Don't panic. It's going to simmer for a while. It'll all be good. Now in the same pan, I've got a little bit of the drippings left behind, which is totally fine with me. I'm going to add in some butter. Now the butter is going to serve a couple different purposes. Our veggies are going to cook in the butter, giving you really great flavor, but it's also going to be what helps you make a roux, which is the thick, it's going to thicken the sauce really well, or the base, I suppose you could call it. It's going to be fantastic. To my butter, I'm going to add my chopped up celery, onion, and carrots. And now what I want to do is just give these a small little seasoning with a pinch of salt, not a lot, just help cook them, out, cook them down a little bit. And I'm going to babysit these and let them saute and caramelize and develop really good color and then we'll bring you, we'll bring you, and then I'll add the flour, make our roux and proceed. The veggies are looking good. Let's add our flour. Now the flour along with the butter is what makes the roux and the, the thickener that makes it really creamy and luxurious and delicious and just mmm, very pot pie like. I'm going to just give this a stir. I want to make sure that I cook this long enough so that I no longer see any bits of raw flour. Otherwise, that can end up making your end result taste like wallpaper glue. And we don't want that. Or at least I don't want that. Now I'm going to add my liquid. I'm going to add my chicken stock. Add that right in. Get that all out. Get a really, really good stir. 
And now I'm going to add in some fresh thyme, nestle that right there, and some fresh sage leaves. They're going to infuse throughout the pot pie. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, I'm going to let that come up to a bubble. I'm actually going to add my meatballs in right now. You could add them now or when it comes to a boil, but it doesn't really make a difference. Add my meatballs right back in. Let this come to a little bubble, turn it down to about medium low and let it simmer for around 20 minutes or so or until it's lovely and thick and I'll show you what to do next. This looks positively gorgeous. I love that. Okay, I'm going to add in some frozen baby peas. Frozen peas, I don't know why I felt the need to say baby in there, but some frozen peas. And I've got some frozen pearl onions. I'm going to add that in there along with a bit of heavy cream. This is going to make it really nice and rich and beautiful. And now I'm going to just let this simmer on low for about 10 minutes or until everything is heated back up and then the pearl onions have kind of, um, well they've thawed and they've gotten nice and soft. So that'll be about 10 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to grab my little dishes and my puff pastry and we'll be ready to rock and roll. I've got some puff pastry that I saw that I'm just rolling it out on a floured surface. My filling looks ridiculous. I mean, just please, please. I mean, can, can we just talk about this for just a second here? Look at that gorgeousness. I've got my oven preheated to 400. I've got some egg wash here, which is just one egg beaten with a little bit of milk or water or whatever you fancy. And I am going to use these ramekins, which means I'm probably going to get, um, I'm going to get like four really big ones. These were my grandmother's, so I like to use these once in a while just for nostalgia. You know, I like, it's just, especially when it comes to comfort food, it, it just goes hand in hand together. So I'm going to make pretty big ones, although this would serve eight people, six to eight people happily. I'm just going to fill these up because I know she would. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just taking a pastry brush and I'm just brushing my egg wash all over I get the edge of my ramekin. That way the puff pastry will stick to it really nicely. And now what I'm going to do, instead of cutting this into rounds, I'm just going to cut this into four squares because I want a little bit of puff pastry to like overhang and it's just, mm, it's magnificent. That way I don't waste any either. See? Shake off the excess flour, like so. And then you just pop that. Look at gorgeous. I mean, can we just, I know, I know you're so sick of me right now with my enthusiasm, but you feel me a little hole so that the air can escape and then just make sure you kind of just press it around the edge. So it sticks to that egg wash. My mouth is watering. It smells fantastic in here. I'm going to continue with all of these and then we'll pop them in the oven. Brush your puff pastry really well with your egg wash. That way it develops a beautiful golden brown color. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper on top of each one. Perfect. Grinding up that pepper. And now I'm going to pop these into my oven that I have preheated at 400 and they'll be in there for about 20 minutes or until they are a beautiful golden brown color on the top. I'll show you what they look like when they're there. They're heavy. My pot pies are in the oven for exactly 20 minutes at 400 degrees and as you can see they look absolutely gorgeous. I have let these cool for about 10 minutes. I have one on my plate. I'm ready to go. It looks just magnificent. Let's go into this. Look how, cr look, look how beautiful and flaky that is. Mm. I'm trying to do this really neat so I don't make a mess on my, all over myself, but you know I'm, I was digging in there for that meatball, which I got. If you come close, you can see I got the meatball. I got some of the sauce. I've got some of that beautiful flakiness on top. Give me a second though, because as you can see, it's steaming. And I want to get this all in one bite. So I'm going to get this to get a little bit cooler. Hot. That. That might even be a better version of a classic chicken pot pie. 
I said it. I'm going back in for a second. That is ridiculously good. Those meatballs have so much flavor. That beautiful flavor of Thanksgiving and the holidays is just running through this, this pot pie like you would not believe. It is magnificent. And like I said, if you are hosting maybe a smaller gathering this year, or you're just a smaller family, you don't want to make the whole big turkey, I think this would be beautiful on your dinner table. Make a nice big one, feels really like plenty and it feels really abundant and it's just gorgeous. Look at that texture of that sauce. I'm gonna go back in for seconds, clearly. I'm obsessed. LauraInTheKitchen.com will have the recipe waiting for you. If you recreate this, please don't forget to share a picture with me. I always love seeing your recreations, especially when it comes to the holiday season because then it feels like we're all celebrating together because like I've said before, you are an extension of my friends and family and I think of all of you, I think so highly of all of you and I want you to have a wonderful holiday season. So let's share pictures, let's share recipes because that is one of my favorite parts of the holiday season. Hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Now I'll show you what to do next. And then you guys know what a turkey sounds like when he's running around the wild. Woo! <laughs> That's the sound of a turkey. Woo! I think. I've actually never heard of turkey in the wild. <laughs>